Go team. OK, so this video is going to talk about the derivation of the clausius clapron equation, um, which really looks at the um, relationship of the enthalpy of vaporization and the vapor pressures. So I've got pressure versus temperature. I've got two phases here, and I've got an equilibrium line between the two. Well, we know that the Gibbs energy, the molar Gibbs energy of our alpha, is going to be equal to the molar Gibbs energy of our beta phase. Um, likewise, the molar al molar chemical potential in our alpha phase is equal to the molar chemical potential of our beta phase at equilibrium, which is along this line, okay? And vapor pressures always involve equilibria because it's, the, by definition, the vapor pressure is the, the pressure of the gas right above the liquid in equilibrium with that liquid. Okay, so where are we going? Well, I want to know that D g molar of my alpha phase is equal to dg molar of my beta phase. And you might be saying, but Allison, the change in Gibbs is zero at equilibrium. I know that. Zero equals zero. We're going to use our understanding of the Gibbs to expand our understanding of what's happening with the thermodynamic potentials along this equilibrium line. So we know that dg equals vdp minus sdt, the fundamental theorem of thermodynamics. Oops, fundamental equation of thermo. Um, and so that means that dGm alpha, we're going to have dGm alpha is equal to V alpha dP minus S alpha dT. And likewise, dGm beta is equal to the molar volume of the beta phase minus S beta dT. Okay. Does everyone follow that idea? So we've got dg is equal to vdp minus sdt of my alpha. dg is equal to vdp minus sdt of my beta. But because the molar volumes are different for the two phases and the entropies are different for the two phases, we need to bookkeep and note those s alpha, s beta, v alpha, v beta. OK, so now what I can do is I, well, I know that these are 0, which means that they are both equal to one another. And if I'm going to remain in equilibrium, any change that happens dg here in my alpha phase has to happen here, such that both changes cancel each other out and they, are, they remain zero. Um, so that means that these two terms are equal to one another. OK, just rewrote it. So now they're equal to each other. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clump together like terms. So I'm going to get v alpha minus v beta all of that multiplied by dp is equal to, and I'm going to bring this over to the other side, and that's going to give me um, s, right, s beta minus s, al whoops, alpha, all of that dt, okay? And so notice I've got this v beta here. Um, so what I can do now is, oops, let me double check. Have I lost a sign? Um, alpha, nope, that's good. This negative goes over there. Hang on, I'm missing a negative sign. <clears throat> Found it. Okay, sorry, I just erased that line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this S alpha and move it over here. So I've got V beta minus V alpha dP. And then I've got this minus S beta, and I'm going to move it over here. So that gives me S beta minus S alpha dt. Sorry about that. OK, so now what I can say is I've got a difference between the beta and the alpha phase, a difference between the beta and the alpha phase. So this gives me S transition dt is equal to V molar transition. This is delta V molar transition dp. Brilliant which leaves me with dt over dp is, oops, I got that backwards. Sorry. This leaves me with dp over dt is equal to delta s transition divided by delta v molar transition. Bonus. I like that. I'm saying bonus a lot. Sorry. Go team. That's better. Sorry, I should add, this is known as the Clapeyron equation.
Yay. So this is the Clapeyron equation, and it tells you that any change of pressure versus temperature. Um, so basically, if you plot P versus T, the slope is going to give you the different or the ratio of the change in the entropies of the transition to the change in the volumes of the transition. That's pretty sweet. Okay, so let me show you how do we put this into practice. If we have a pressure versus temperature plot, sorry, I should have wrote temperature there before, um, a pressure versus temperature plot between two phases, this line would then represent the slope, dp dt, is delta s transition over the change in the volume or the molar volume. But we know at equilibrium, when delta g is equal to zero, delta s transition is equal to delta h transition divided by the temperature of the, the temperature of the transition. So this means that dp dt is equal to delta h vaporization for the per, for this if if uh, alpha is a uh, vapor and if or a liquid and beta is a vapor um, divided by t transition delta v m of transition. Um, just s trans is equal to delta h trans divided by t transition. Okay. Um, and so here then would tell you that your slope can give you delta h vaporization if you know your t of the transition divided by delta v m. Um, so this, um, knowing this value of the phase transition um, will tell you what your delta h vaporization could be. Um, powerful, powerful stuff. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is how we can simplify the Clapeyron equation into what you have seen before, which is the Clausius Clapeyron equation. And that's going to take a little bit more of a special case. So, in the case of the liquid vapor equilibrium, so let's look at liquid vapor equilibrium. Okay, so delta V m is equal to v of your liquid minus v of your gas. Is that right? Yes. Oh, no, sorry. We're going the uh, opposite way to where we're um, the vaporization. So we're going from the liquid to the gas. So the final state would be our gas. Sorry about that. So v gas is equal to minus v of the liquid. OK, so you can make an approximation here that the difference in the molar volume Again, these are both molar. The difference in the molar volume of the gas is going to be much, 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 as I almost fall over, much bigger than the molar volume of the liquid. Think about what happens when you have, you know, a mug of coffee. And if I were to vaporize this, it would fill the entire room. Um, oh, that would be lovely to be a drift in a sea of coffee vapor. Um, so we can therefore approximately say that this is zero in comparison to via the gas, such that delta Vm, whoops is approximately V gas because V gas is much, much greater than V of the liquid. Okay, you will make this approximation a few times in your homework. So keep this in mind that you can make this step. If you have two unknowns and you don't know how to move forward, think about what your system is and the, the description gas to liquid or liquid to solid. Okay, so making that approximation, then we know that V of the gas, Vm of the gas, is equal to Rt over P, assuming ideal. That's cool. So then what we can do is we can put this into here. And that's going to, OK, um, I'm going to erase this. So screenshot, and then I'm going to go to the next bit. OK, I've just plugged in Rt over P into this part, all right? Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this a little bit. Now, this is the um, temperature associated with the gas, which would be happening at the equilibrium, such that this T is now the same value. Um, so actually, this has never been T trans. I'm so sorry. That's containing the temperature of the transition. Yes, okay, cool. All right, um, so now I'm going to combine these two Ts and I'm gonna get delta H vaporization times P divided by R T squared. I've just taken this, put it upstairs, multiply the two Ts together. 
Cool. All right. Now I'm going to take, actually, I'm going to erase all of this so you can see where I'm going. Okay. And I'll actually just, y'all can watch me do it. Okay. So I've got dp dt is equal to delta h vaporization times p divided by r t squared. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this p and move it to the left hand side, 1 over p dp dt is equal to delta h vaporization over r t squared. Why am I doing this? Because it's really healthy for you to see how we make this next step happen. Okay. This is a nifty little trick. So 1 over p dp is the same as p, oops, is the same as d log of p. All right, let's double check that. If I were to take the derivative of the log of p, so d log of p, that would give me 1 over p dp. Just like if I were to integrate, the integral of 1 over p dp is equal to log p. Okay, and so if I were to take the antiderivative of this, I get log p. So that means if I take the derivative of log p, I get 1 over p dp. Follow me? All right. So what's neat about this is I can then say, okay, and again, this is not something that you would have known to do. This is why I'm showing you this derivation, because you have seen the clausius clapron equation probably in two different classes, if not three different classes. I can't remember if Graham does the clausius clapron in inorganic or not. Um, but I know you've seen it in inorganic or uh, analytical, and I know you've seen it in 116. Now you're seeing it again. Okay. So we've got 1 over PDP is equal to d log P. This means then that d log P dt is equal to delta H vaporization over RT squared. Yay! This is the Clausius Clapeyron equation. Go team! All right. Um, now, you may have seen this in a slightly different form because you normally would then take this and you would integrate it with respect to each side, okay? And if you do that, I don't know if y'all can see me if I come on this side. Okay, so if you integrate this on each side, this means we've got d log p is equal to delta H vaporization over RT squared dt. Integrate that, and you're left with log of P2 over P1 equals, now because you have a T squared down here, that puts you at minus delta H vaporization over R over T from T1 to T2. Go team which means that you've got log P2 over P1 is equal to minus delta H vaporization over R1 over T2 minus one over T1. And this is most likely the clausius clapeyron equation that you have seen time and time again. Um, but what's important to recognize is this originates from an equilibrium of the chemical potentials between the vapor phase and the liquid phase. And under very strict conditions, i.e. you've got a spontaneous reaction going from liquid to vapor during that phase transition such that you can have this occur. So how does the phase or how does the vapor pressure of the transition change as you go from one pressure to the next? This equation tells you. So if you were to plot, pressure versus temperature of your, so if it looks like this, so here's your liquid, here's your vapor, that slope right there, that changing slope is going to tell you the relationship of the vapor pressures of your liquid to your vapor and how the temperature is going to adjust with that phase transition because at low T, the pressures are going to have to be much lower 
um, for uh, a phase transition to occur. And at high T, the pressures are going to be have to basically accommodate for that. And so you're looking at the ratio of those temperatures. Um, and so it's actually better to plot this as a function, whoops, as I throw that, as a function of one over T. That's how you've seen it many times. So P versus one over T. That's where you get your linear trend. Um, actually, sorry, this is log P. So if you plot the log P versus uh, reciprocal temperature, um, you get away from that curvature and you go straight to the linear line and minus delta H vaporization can be found from your slope. Go team. Okay. Uh, Klaus's clapron, you've seen it in lab before. Um, now this is the guts behind it. I hope this was helpful. Um, the other, so key takeaways from this, this step um, to where you can get one over PDP is a D log P DT, um, that, and then noting that we are looking at a change in the chemical potentials between the two and maintaining an equilibrium of those. All right. I think that closes off focus four. Go team.